look forward to your talk. The title of your talk is Temporal Control of Drug Release from Self-Heating Hydrogen. Is that right? No. No, I'm getting it wrong. Non-encapsulation of silver base antimicrobial. Sorry. My name is Jacin Gagnon, and thank you for the nice introduction. So I'm going to introduce you to a very small part of my PhD projects, which is on the nano-encapsulation of silver-based antimicrobial drugs. I'm doing this PhD to uh, render biomaterials more interesting, because biomaterials are commonly used in medicine nowadays. You can think of, as basic example, of hip, knee, or tooth implants. And the trend in using this type of implants is continuously increasing uh, and including in Switzerland. However, infections still remain an issue and this is even more problematic nowadays as bacteria are becoming more and more uh, resistant to antibiotics. So to improve this, at the University of Fribourg, we are trying to make um, targeted trigger release of these uh, antibiotics uh, compounds in presence of bacteria. So the way it will work is to have a sensor that can detect single-strand DNA or RNA that is released when a bacteria is swimming around. This strand will interact with the sensor in such a way that it can remove another strand on the sensor and this induces a conformational change of the sensor in such a way of the two ends of the sensor come together, which will then induce the release of the antimicrobial drugs from a nanocontainer, and these drugs can then kill the bacteria. So this PhD project is divided into two parts. The part I'm working in is the development of a capsule system to contain these uh, antibiotics and um, uh, to contain them as much as possible. And the other part, which is made uh, in the group of uh, Professor Christian Boschet, which organic chemistry group, they are working on the development of the sensor. The sensor part has already been uh, shown to uh, be working in, in the Boschet group and the um, the mechanisms that it works has been patented. Uh, in my part of the project, so in the group of Professor Katakna Fom, we decided to work using silver drugs. Why we chose silver drugs is because they have well-known antimicrobial activity towards a broad range of bacteria, and they also have a low tox toxicity towards uh, human beings. However, one big issue with the nano-encapsulation of silver drugs is the silver ion release. Uh, the thing is that it's normally far too fast, which results in a short-term antimicrobial activity, as well as in an increased cytotoxicity in the surrounding tissues. So there's a need for the development of uh, nanocontainers for the encapsulation of silver compounds in long time. So one of the type of materials I've been developing was made from cerium oxide and using a template to synthesize them. The way I've done it was first to synthesize polystyrene beads, then I synthesized several nanoparticles on the surface of these polystyrene beads, then I encapsulate them inside the polystyrene so that I can then coat them uh, within a cerium oxide shell and after the removal of the polystyrene core, this results in cerium oxide nanocontainers with integrated silver nanoparticles. Uh, these nanocontainers have a very good silver release. In fact, they have a silver release over a period exceeding three months, and even after this period of time, there's only 30% of the initial silver content that was encapsulated. Uh, this silver release is also shown with the antimicrobial activity test in which they efficiently kill um, E. coli during the test. In order to make sure that they can be uh, safely applied in medicine, 
I've done cytotoxicity test. The way I've done it was to lay down the powder on the bottom of culture flask and totally cover this culture flask. Then I deposited um, a culture medium containing the cells on top of it in such a way that cells can deposit on the powder and are allowed to grow on top of it. Then analyze the uh, cytotoxicity with LDH and confocal laser scanning microscopy uh, study. The LDH study is very promising. In fact, for the natron containers without any silver, I can see that they have an LDH very similar to the negative control in which cells were just grown on glass. So it means that it has very low cytotoxicity. Uh, however, when the silver nanoparticles containing uh, capsules were used, I see a small increase in LDH assay, so an increase in cytotoxicity. And this is probably due uh, only after seven days, and that's probably due to an increased concentration of silver uh, that is being released continuously from the nano containers in such a way it passes at some point the threshold and becomes to show some cytotoxicity. Using uh, confocal laser scanning microscopy, uh, these are the results for the nano, uh, silver nanoparticles containing containers. I can see that cells are still growing, developing and dividing on top of the uh, nano containers. However, there are two main effects that I could see. First of all, the cells tend to be more spherical in shape, and also they tend more to form clusters instead of being spread over the whole surface. Um, the spherical shape tend to suggest that cells don't like to interact with the surface. And also, this might be due also to the roughness of the surface, and this is still under study. But it's still very promising. So to conclude, I've shown you that silver nanoparticles could be encapsulated inside serum oxide nanocontainers, that these nanocontainers have exceptional silver release over a period uh, way above three months, they show good antimicrobial activity, and they also show limited cytotoxicity, which is mainly driven by the release of uh, silver. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, first of all, Professor Katarina from for allowing me to work on this project, Massimo for the nice movie that he prepared, and I would like to thank uh, the Adolf Markel Institute, especially Professor Roten and Professor Fink for allowing me to use their facilities. Uh, Dr. Cliff for his help with cell culture and Dagmar and Dimitri for the uh, help with CLSM. And I would like to thank the financial support, of course, for the Swiss National Science Foundation, the FreeMAT, the University of Fribourg, and Adolf Markel Foundation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this interesting contribution, but also for being very much in time because we need it. We have time for some discussions now. Some questions, please. Peter Gerhard. Why did you uh, choose serum oxide as shell material? Uh, because serum oxide has a low cytotoxicity, and also because the goal is to coat uh, implants with this type of nano containers, and we're thinking of uh, load-bearing implants, so like hip implants, that are very stable, that are staying in the body for a very long period of time. So we wanted to have nano containers that can stay stable over a prolonged period of time because we are we were afraid of uh, having debris swimming around the surrounding tissues, and serum oxide is very stable. I tested my nano containers in concentrated hydrochloric acid or in water for very long times, and they really stay intact. So Since you gave up, no problem. Serum oxide? Well, it's like everything. You will find paper that says cytotoxic, other that say that it's not cytotoxic. But if you look at my results, they have a low cytotoxicity. It's working, it's working. It's working. That's right, at least in the dark. So if you do biotesting of serum oxide because of the band gap, you should do it in the dark lab. 
Yeah, and I think in the body it's dark, so maybe <laughs> it's not too toxic. I have one question re regarding the dose. Uh, in the priority program, we were discussing about how to define the dose of silver. Now here you have used two different cell types, a totally different uh, bacteria and adherent cells. Yeah? Yeah. They are different, they're grown <coughs> differently with different cell number densities. How to, uh, well, how would you um, make sure that your comparison is fair? Maybe, you know, you take like 10 bacteria, one milligram silver, and you take a million of fibroblasts and one milligram bac um, of silver. You know, so how you make, how do you make sure that at the end everything is relevant for an implant? So could the surf, could there be like, uh, in, 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 in drug dose you often give like, drug per square centimeter. Could this be a dose value, or uh, what, is, what is your recommendation for the future? Uh, yeah, that's the first result, so that's much more research. Like, I didn't check uh, at until what concentration <coughs> the uh, human cells were killed by the... So that would be one thing I should do beforehand, before going to the next step. But the optimal goal is to have a really control silver release, so to have everything staying inside. And we are actually getting closer to this because I've further coated these nano containers and I have even a more control on the silver release. And to have this release only in presence of bacteria. So you should not have any silver at all being released unless there's a bacteria coming and then everything is should be taken out. So that's the optimal goal. Any further questions? With that diagnostic case, I would like to thank you again very much for this kind of